Hey everybody, this is Jay Kilroy. Quick little video of some old material that I had laying around. Uh, as you know, I just replaced a uh, the tool post on my lathe with a, uh, if you saw the video, with a new Aloris uh, BXA style tool post. I want to talk to you about the tool post that I had. First off, I want to tell you, there was nothing wrong with the tool post that I had. For hobby use, uh, occasional use, this is a uh, tool post that I had called the KRF Company Omni Post. You see the website here in front of you. Uh, the tool post was excellent. It's American made. It's extremely well made, heat treated, quality steel, and uh, it's very rugged. It has the indexable function of uh, a multifix. It has um, a very rugged, very few moving parts. Um, it, you know, really, really, really quality post. This is the website for the company called krfcompany.com, and they talk about um, the product overview here. Um, the uh, give you a shot of the tool post. It uses an index disc here, serrated disc underneath the tool post. The tool post itself is a solid bar of uh, heat treated uh, steel. I believe it's like 4130. And uh, with a big a stud going down through into the T-nut. And then the tool holder has a uh, pointed set screw that goes all the way through the tool holder and engages this disc at the bottom. And uh, that is what you use to set your height. It's a very positive setting. Once it's set, it's there. And uh, like I said, it's an extremely rugged, uh, very nice tool post. Um, and they have a variety of holders. Uh, standard holders, boring bar holders, uh, carbide holders that d directly hold uh, carbide inserts without any type of uh, other holder, which is kind of nice. Angled holders, which are very, very handy. V-groove holders for holding small boring bars. Uh, the typical cutoff holder. They have a, a attachment for holding a uh, like a pencil grinder. Um, the standard holders, if you look at the standard holders, uh, some of the standard holders are also set with the groove across the face at an angle for using uh, tool steel, uh, high-speed steel blanks, without having to grind the top relief. Anyway, it's a nice tool post, and I made a bunch of tool holders for my tool post, and I had a bunch of pictures of the process, uh, and I, this, is, I didn't, this is back before the days of me doing video, and I just wanted to um, kind of narrate through uh, the pictures that I had of making this um, uh, this series of tool busts. but you see the design here obviously it's it's very simple and uh, very easy to make not that I'm saying that the ones that I make are in any way the same quality as the um, as the ones that are made by the KRF company uh, they make theirs out of uh, heat treated uh, tool steel or uh, 4130, 4140, something like that, 1045, heat treated quality steel um, and they're made to a, to a high uh, standard of finish. So I was just going to go through quickly these images that I have here on um, how I made my KRF holders. So we'll start where you always start uh, with um, material. Uh, I had the largest series, uh, still have it actually, the largest series of Omnipost uh, designed for up to a 15 inch lathe. So what you're looking at here is um, two inch square stock. Uh, this is cleaning up the stock on the Kearney Trekker. Again, it's, I don't know why it always looks like the pictures make layers rusted to crazy, but got a big slabbing mill in here and uh, just taking some um, uh, passes here to clean this stuff up and to trim it down in size just a little bit. Uh, uh, let's see, here's another shot. Uh, that slabbing mill, these these little uh, curly Q chips that this thing rolls off of here, they will um, they'll hurt you. So <laughs> you don't want to mess around there. But uh, it will produce some chips anyway. So I slabbed off all four sides of these bars uh, to make two bars uh, that. Um, I was going to make these cutters out of. And again, this is roughly two inch square. Uh, I believe I 
cut them down here. I've gone ahead and marked the total length for the blocks. I'm doing a couple of different style holders, so I got different total lengths. Uh, I've been to the bandsaw, done some cutting. So here you go. We're making six uh, tool holders for the Omni Post. Uh, so um, into the shaper. Everyone, I think, knows I like the shaper. You see, I've got three blocks here stacked up in a vertical position with a piece of thick paper uh, here to make up the difference in thickness to allow me to clamp all these at once. And all I'm doing is I'm running the shaper across here. I'm trimming them off all to the same finish length. Uh, you kind of get to walk through the process here. Um, so we're slinging hot chips. Uh, everything's cut to finish length. Blew the blocks up. Uh, here, here's a holder. This is an angled, right here, this is an angled KRF holder you see in this picture. Um, and again, these are, uh, you'll notice something. you notice my blocks are thicker than their blocks. It's not necessarily a good thing. And I'll explain to you later why. Again, these blocks are very well made. Uh, even though this is just a round surface, uh, round uh, steel hole clamping on a steel post, uh, the grip is uh, tremendous. You snug down this bolt, that's it. Uh, this thing's not moving. Uh, so, let's see, we're in the bandsaw here, and I, what I'm doing here is I'm making a punch holder to lay out all my blocks. So I made up a punch holder to go into this KRF block and for me to run a, a small transfer punch down this hole in order to lay out the... Uh, hole where the uh, height adjusting screw goes and the main hole. That relationship is very important. This distance right here is very important and uh, this is the best way for me to do it. You see how I laid it out right here. So um, we uh, throw this thing into uh, the vise from a big mill, pull out the uh, annular cutter arbor that uh, you've seen me use before. Uh, truly something that I really like. Um, and uh, we knock some holes out. And this is a very nice, and you know, when I tell you it'll make some chips, make a tangled mess of chips, it'll make a tangled mess of chips. This is the one downside to this type of cutter. Let's uh, see. Bebop through there. So um, I cut all, I drilled all the blocks. And then I was going to make some angle blocks. So I'm making three angled uh, cutter types. So you see what I did here is I mounted all three of the blocks in the vise of the shaper, and I tilted the knee of the shaper. I think the next picture gives you a better, here I am cutting, but I think the next picture gives you a better uh, understanding of the angle. There you go. Tilted the knee of the shaper over, and I'm cutting the tops of these down um, with the shaper to get uh, an angled surface. I, it, yeah, it would have been faster to saw them, but I, I like using the shaper. I had fun with it. So here we are slinging hot chips. Again, uh, you know, any excuse to use a shaper. And uh, that beautiful shaper finish. By the way, the material here, this is just cold rolled steel. This is, uh, I mean, excuse me, hot rolled. This is just hot rolled square bar. Uh, and before somebody writes in and says that I'm, uh, you know, an awful machinist, terrible novice because I used hot rolled material uh, instead of some sort of um, <clears throat> high grade tool steel. Uh, if I was building these for a production environment, yeah, I'd probably use something else. But for use in my home shop uh, and an occasional professional shop, no, this is fine. These things will last forever. Uh, you know, it, with my use, so I don't see any problem with it. Uh, pop through our shaper here. Now, after I drilled those uh, big holes out, by the way, these are the slugs that are left over. We made six of these uh, holders, and uh, this is a postal scale. The amount of metal that I didn't have to turn into chips, 3 pounds, 1.6 ounces. This is significant. There's six of these things. We're over 3 pounds. This is a half a pound each. So for each holder, I didn't convert a half a pound of metal to chips. And 
that's self-explanatory why annular cutters are a good investment. Uh, here we are in the POS Bridgy clone um, with the uh, small boring head and we're boring out the uh, final dimension on the main bore of the tool holder. Couple pictures there. And uh, this picture kind of illustrates one of the things that people do a lot with boring heads. One of the mistakes they make is they run them too slow. Um, you know, surface feet per minute is surface feet per minute, especially if you're using a carbide boring bar. Um, putting the thing in there and running it some creepy RPM because you think the boring head can't take it. And uh, you get a bad surface finish and you wonder why. Uh, this is not running as fast as you might think, but, uh, you know, you still run it far, fast enough to get a decent surface finish with the type of cutter, uh, geometry, and material that you're using. Uh, here we are drilling the holes, the um, uh, tap size hole for the uh, 5 16 set screws that index off the index plate and set the height. And uh, this is how I figured I couldn't find pointed uh, big long 5 16 set screws like this, so I made some. I got some long set screws, they just had the regular grub point, stuck them in my drill. Went over to the bench grinder, turned the bench grinder on, uh, ran the um, surface of the uh, set screw uh, opposite or into the grinding wheel and uh, knocked these out in just a matter of minutes. And it was a handy way to do that. Uh, they didn't get so hot. I kept some water around to cool them so they didn't get so hot as to, um, you know, lose their temperature, their, uh, their temper. It got a little warm there, but uh, all in all, these worked out really well and did six of those total. Uh, so here's the tool post clamped in the small lathe. You'll see um, the way, see this dimension here, my height dimension. It's too high to be honest. Um, the extra bulk of the material that I put in there makes these blocks a little harder to close. Uh, they still work fine. Uh, it just you have to lean on the wrench a little bit. The KRF holders which are really about an inch and a half high, not two inches high, uh, close much more easily and close just as positively. Uh, what I'm doing here with the 45 degree uh, turned piece of steel in the chuck, I'm scribing a center line so that I can uh, take um, dimensions off so that I can lay out my slot for my tool or my tool holder to go in this angled holder. And uh, couple more pictures here. So here we are on the big mill, letting the smoke out, uh, milling the uh, tool holder slots. Um, uh, bad picture there, sorry about that. Here you go, here's a clearer picture. I milled 5 8 inch slots, which I think was a, it's uh, the same size as the largest slot used by the KRF company in this series, uh, using a uh, four flute, 5 8 uh, crest cut style, uh, mill, weld on mill uh, in this picture uh, to mill these uh, 5 8 inch slots. Uh, here's another picture of you can see the rather large pile of chips that's accumulating. And um, they're still cutting away. Cut quite a few of these. Now what I'm doing with the same mill is I'm cutting up. I, I realized I didn't want to run my set screws. I'm coming to the conclusion that these tool holders are too thick. Because I didn't want to, I didn't have set screws to run in long enough um, to clamp the tool and still be able to actually see them. So I'm using the same uh, mill to relieve the top over the tool holder slot of the tool slot uh, where the uh, set screws, holes to the set screws are going to be drilled. And uh, here I am drilling the um, tap size holes for the five, uh, again, 5 16 set screws, three of them on each block to hold the tools. Um, very heavy duty. And um, here I did a big boring bar holder. And the way I did it is I clamped it to the tool post. Um, I put um, a uh, different size, I believe this is a one inch, I put a one inch annular cutter 
in the arbor in the holder the arbor that I made clamped it in the lathe chuck and then just ran it straight on through and that gives me a perfectly aligned uh, uh, center height for that boring bar and I just don't ever have to touch this center height dimension again here you can clearly see the indexed base of the KRF style Omni post holder and how it indexes around on that set screw it works really well uh, you loosen the screw, pick it up, index it, tighten the screw back. And uh, very simple, very rugged, very reliable. And uh, I think, there we go, oh, action shot, kind of blown out. Sorry about that. So here we are, we're back in the big mill. And uh, I've decided to trim a little dimension off of uh, some of these holders. So I've got a... Um, uh, one and a half inch, uh, I think six flute roughing mill, and I'm um, just trimming some of these holders down. Again, letting the smoke out. Here I am trimming some, trimming the back end of this holder, trimming some of these holders uh, down a little bit. I'll tell you, there's no reason to make them any thicker than an inch and a half. The original design uh, by the KRF company. Uh, here I am power tamping the set screw holes uh, for a boring bar holder. Uh, it's a 5 16 uh, set screw size, coarse thread. And uh, we're back to the beginning. This is where I was cutting a chunk off the original 2 inch uh, bar. So there you go. Uh, made a bunch of holders. Um, I'll. Uh, just publish this up as just a little kind of uh, short video, kind of a slideshow. Hope you enjoy it. Give you some ideas on how to do your setups. Uh, introduce you to the KRF Omnipost. If you have a small lathe, like a um, like a South Bend 9 inch uh, or uh, other lathes, uh, wades, little lathes, the um, the Omnipost is a very nice design. Uh, some of the older rivets. Uh, the Omnipost is a very nice design. It's sized very well. It's uh, unobtrusive, doesn't get in your way. Um, I The only reason I switched over to an Aloris, uh, similar to what I have in my pacemakers, because I just wanted something that was a little faster changeover. And, uh, but like I said, for occasional use or hobby use, uh, the KRF Omnipost uh, will uh, certainly serve your needs. So... Um, then again, again, I hope you enjoyed the um, little slideshow, and uh, be safe in the shop, and I'll be back with you soon.